Hello, Lucien. Uh, nice meeting you. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Um, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself first. Sure, sure. Well, again, thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor to be on your show. And uh, so my name's uh, Lucien. I am a, a senior instructor at Calvin Chin's Martial Arts Academy in Newton, Mass. And, um, you know, we teach Kung Fu and Tai Chi. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. I've been a student originally of my my teacher at Calvin's former, uh, his, his, his Sifu, Hong Tit Fu. Uh, and then um, he kind of went into retirement and then I, I uh, helped my teacher at Calvin open the school in Newton. And uh, uh, so I've been doing this now for 35 years, which as I'm sure you know, is what we call a start. Um, <laughs> but uh, but this, is, uh, this is what I do full time. This is how I make a living is to teach Kung Fu and Tai Chi. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, I would like to ask, you know, uh, these arts, Tai Chi and Qi Kong, uh, it says that uh, it's a path to spirituality. Sure. Could you, uh, Talk a little bit about the spiritual part of Tai Chi, Qigong. Uh, how can we get to this spiritual part? Sure, I think um, it's it's an interest. It's a really interesting question, first of all. So uh, I think it's it's very thought provoking um, as a question goes. And and you know I think that um, whenever you are in the pursuit of of excellence, when you're in the pursuit of perfection. Um, there's a common thread that, that runs through that, whether it's Tai Chi or whether it's carpentry or whatever the skill might be that you have to really apply yourself to attain some level of mastery. Um, I think that that process, um, you know, it requires first of all diligence um, and it requires, um, it requires and both enforces a sense of humility uh, you know, you can have a big ego if you want, but it's not going to help you to get very far. And, uh, and you know, I always know for myself <clears throat> that, you know, after 35 years of doing this, that um, whenever I think, oh, yeah, I'm really nailing it, I really understand this, I probably am farther than I would if, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and that's usually a good check to myself to kind of check myself and, and really assess what's going on. So this um, is really a Taoist profile. Yes, yeah. But I also, I, I think that that kind of, that process of development, it's a, you know, it's, there's a saying like the teacher can, can lead you to the door, but you are the one who has to go through it, right? And so, <clears throat> and so I think there's something about that process of, of a constant pursuit of trying to improve um, that, you know, that leads towards, I, I don't know if I would call it divinity, right? But, but spirituality is a fairly broad term, right? It, it can apply yes. to many things. But in, in my opinion, I think you mentioned Taoism, right? I'm, I, I can't claim a, to be a religious person in any direction, but I would certainly say that there, there's a lot in Taoism as a philosophy that appeals. And, you know, I think yeah. if we look at kind yeah. of Right, and if we look at kind of the Cliff Notes version of um, of the three major religions in Chinese culture, you have Taoism, you have Buddhism, and then going back a ways, but still uh, Confucianism, and there are underlying threads of those. Right, so each of them has their approach. They all have the same goal, but a different approach. Right, so so Buddhism is we're inherently flawed, and only through hard work and following the law can we end up on the path of enlightenment. Right, and then. And then Confucianism says, just honor your parents and everything else is going to be okay. Right? These are the, the broken down, a very oversimplified version. But to me, Taoism says we're inherently good in our nature. And when we don't fight our nature, we end up on the path of spiritual. Going with the flow. That's it. Exactly. And so to me, there's something about that process of, you know, you can bang up against movement or understanding you can understand something intellectually doesn't matter you have to do it enough that you acquire it in your body to really understand it and i think there's a certain part of that pursuit that becomes spiritual um, you need that, education yes yeah so kind of you know that applying yourself to it 
Thank you. And then you see that many forms of uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, Kung Fu. Yes. Someone yeah. would like to, to start. What does he or she have to know? Sure. I think that's also, well, you got good questions. So, Thank so you. you know, when, when I'm asked very often by people because, um, you know, a lot of people who know me know that this is something that's a big part of my life. And so, you know, whether I've come across them, we become friends during competitions or, you know, traveling, whatever it is, um, even nowadays on social media, right? And so um, when you come into contact with people, I get a lot of questions about, well, in my area, if I was looking for a school, what should I look for, right? And I think because exactly. most, and I think it's because most people are not informed consumers, right? If, if you're a mechanic and you're going to buy a car, you can pop the hood open and you look at the engine and you understand what's happening. So you're informed. It's different when you're going to learn Kung Fu or Tai Chi or Qigong. How do you know? If you don't already know those things, how do you know is, is it a quality experience or not, right? And, and to me, I think there are a few things that we would look for, right? So we want to make sure that the person teaching is credible, right? Do I, do I feel, uh, do I have a good feeling from this person or do I feel like maybe there's something a little off? Are they trying to be a salesman or are they trying to be a teacher? Because there's a distinct difference, right? And so, you know, there are many people who will say, well, my Tai Chi is the best Tai Chi or my Qigong is the best Qigong. And we never engage in any of that. I find that to be a, a huge waste of time. Uh, I have learned in my travels and in my time doing this that there are many people who have excellent experience and understanding. And we can never think I'm the only person who has understanding you know, this is, this is egocentric, right? And yeah, and, so true. And so I think there are many different approaches. You know, you say, well, you know, Chen style focuses a lot on Fa Jing, right? And, and Wu style known as small frame, and you have Yang style known as big frame, but it's all Tai Chi, right? And so the question is, is the person teaching that Tai Chi knowledgeable and open with what they're teaching? And do you gain a feeling of trust from them, right? So so I don't necessarily like to engage in a conversation of, you know, uh, what you should look for in a specific Tai Chi, you know, from a, should you look for a specific Tai Chi or a specific Qigong. I think it all has value, right? Even, even the term Qigong versus Tai Chi, um, so much of Tai Chi is also Qigong, right? It's exactly. movement, movement and breath, right? And so um, I think one of the things that might be a little bit unique about my teacher's approach in ex explaining these things is that um, he would say, uh, you know, that while everybody talks about chi, um, chi is a way that unfortunately some people have used the idea of chi as a way to kind of pull the wool over people's eyes. Maybe they don't have a lot of understanding, you know, so they say, oh, you know, uh, just follow along and eventually you'll feel something. But, you know, it gets the teacher off the hook because if the person comes to you in a year and says, I don't feel anything yet, you say, oh, you're not doing it right. You know? <laughs> and, right? So my teacher tends to talk about things that run parallel to chi. So, for example, talking about circulation, right? Um, I happen to be the son of two acupuncturists, both my mother and father. And so... With acupuncturists as parents, they, you know, there's a saying, chi lives in the blood, right? Yes. If you constrict the flow of blood, you're white knuckled, there's no chi flowing through there because there's no circulation. If you relax the hand, the, the hand flushes pink, there's blood flowing through that. So we typically, instead of using the terminology of chi, although we certainly, obviously it's a real thing, um, with two parents as acupuncturists, I'll be, you know, I'll be thrown out if I say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but but we we prefer to talk about about um, circulation, about proper structure and mechanics, um, also because we want to make it clear to lay people. Not everybody can understand or appreciate the idea of chi. And so if you speak about things that are kind of more based in a scientific terminology, right? If I say this is a triangle, you you can't deny it. If I say this is a hoop, if I say, this is a square. You look at me like, what are you talking about? You can verify for yourself. And I think that's, that's, that's important. Um, people, they should look for a teacher that makes things clear from the beginning. 
Yes. You will have a fully understanding of. Yes, yes. The, the, more, the more mystery attached to what they are trying to teach, the, the more skeptical I become. Oh, because, exactly. <laughs> because yes. it's not a mystery. This is, you know, you have, you, you, you have our, our teacher used to say, everybody has the same number of joints, right? Everyone comes in the door, you got two elbows, two wrists, two shoulders, two hips, two knees, two ankles, right? And there's no one comes in with three knees, right? <laughs> and, so, and so those joints are all designed to work in a certain way. Exactly, we can force yes. them to do things that are unnatural, right? If I, if, I, if, I, if I have my knee lined up on my toe and I shift my weight forward, it's designed to do that. If I have my toe pointing this way and I bang my knee to the right, it's not designed to do that and bad things happen when I do that. So, yes. you know, so we prefer to kind of speak in those terms of kind of the structure and the mechanics of what are the way the body is designed to work. Um, again, coming back to that Taoist perspective of, you know, uh, don't fight what is natural, right? Oh, yes. Right. We use the body the way the body is designed to be used and then we improve the health of the body, right? Um, Blood is also a great form of lubrication for joints, right? If, if, if you look from Western medicine, you get a rotator cuff injury is very common, right? And so people will tear this, uh, the ligament, and then it's very weak. It hurts when they raise their arm. So they go to physical therapy. And, you know, I think physical therapy is great. I have nothing negative to say about it. Um, but, you know, they, they hook up a EMS, a electromuscular stimulation. Yeah. I know. Because they want the muscle to pulse to get the blood flow into the joint because that's going to help create that elasticity. So I always tell our students, um, because we work a lot with seniors as well, I say, okay, if you could gain the mobility of the joint without having to hook yourself up to an electrical machine, wouldn't you want to do that? And no one's told me, no, I'd rather just get hooked up to electricity. So, you know. Well, that's trends. and uh, yes. 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 But let's come back to our um, spirituality. Yes, yes. I would like to ask, what is the connection between meditation and these arts of Tai Chi, Qigong, Kung Fu? Sure. So I think that, um, that Tai Chi specifically, uh, although Qigong has, has elements of this as well, um, but Tai Chi, especially with the weight shifting and uh, the pivoting and all of the footwork involved as well, is known as a form of moving meditation, right? Yeah. Um, so meditation from a traditional perspective, we, you know, everyone thinks back to the Shaolin monks and they sit in the cave and they just sit still for days and weeks. And, you know, there's value in that. I, I would never say anything against it. But Tai Chi is a form of getting yourself to that mental place, but through movement, right? And, and I often tell our students uh, that, um, that Tai Chi is a gift that you give to yourself, right? Because you can't, you can't do Tai Chi and think about the bills or, you know, my, my, my kids, I need to pick up this thing for my kids or I have to go to the store, we need milk. You can't think about that and do Tai Chi well. You have to devote yourself at that time to doing Tai Chi. And so because of that, um, that sense of kind of moving meditation where you really you get in that kind of flow state. Uh, you're not thinking about anything. You're just doing it. Um, it takes time to build up enough of a repertoire within Tai Chi to be able to do that. But once you do it, it's a sublime experience. It just feels so good. And, uh, and you know, it's something I consider myself very fortunate to be able to do this every day. This is what I do. And I can't believe it. You know, I'm very happy with that. Tai Chi, it's a gift that you give to yourself. With Absolutely. your permission, I will use this quote. Any, anytime, anytime. <laughs> it's so wonderful. Anytime, <laughs> yeah. And now I would like to ask you, see, uh, how can Tai Chi and Qigong can help us with um, some mental issues, let's say like this, uh, depression or uh, yes. anxiety? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that there's a lot that Tai Chi has to offer. Um, I think, first of all, if we have um, deficiencies in, if we have physical deficiency in the body, this also affects us mentally, right? It just does. If, oh, yes. if you know, even to put it in the most simplistic terms, if I break my arm, I'm not happy about it, right? <laughs> and so if I fill my body with junk food, 
and my I don't feel good. You know, it affects my mental state of well-being as well. And so I think uh, both because we can get to a place where when we're doing Tai Chi, we're forced to put worry aside, right? Stress is, is a really big contributor to depression and also to physical um, issues that people will have. And when we're doing Tai Chi, we have to take ourselves, we have to put the stress aside. And Tai Chi makes it easier to do that because you don't have to think about the big picture. You just think one foot in front of the other, one hand on top of the other hand you know, lift the elbow to a horizontal position. Even thinking about those individual postures as you go through the movements of Tai Chi, the rest of the stress falls away to the side. You don't think about it. This is, I think, why I say Tai Chi is the gift you give yourself because during that time, you are 100% focused on what you need to be focused on and you're not affected by that stress after. I always tell people, trust me, the problems will be there when you're done. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to miss it. It'll be there. But during the time you're doing Tai Chi, you really focus on doing Tai Chi. Um, I think it has a great effect on our sense of mental health and well-being. I think, you know, we work with uh, a lot of people with Parkinson's doing Tai Chi. Um, just over a year ago, we were awarded a grant from the Parkinson's Foundation that helped us to start that program. Oh, yes, wonderful. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. And, and it's been a really incredible, rewarding experience for me on a personal level, getting to work with people because, um, you know, people who have Parkinson's, they suffer, you know, it's a neurological disease. So I, I, it's hard to think of a worse nightmare than your body shutting down on you and not doing what you want it to do and rigidity setting in. And to see them, um, first of all, even one class, they come in and they feel like, well, I took steps to improve myself and they feel good about that. And that lifts their spirits. And then the other thing is, you know, if, if you're 73 years old and you have part, you've had Parkinson's for 10 years and it's pretty aggressive and you're on all kinds of medication and it affects your sleep and, you know, it affects all kinds of other things, it's very easy to have that make you depressed. I mean, it, that's probably an appropriate response. Um, but when you, when you come to a Tai Chi class and you do these exercises that you're able to do, Right? I think it's important if you, if you say, oh, you know, uh, if somebody who has Parkinson's comes in, they say, okay, we're going to do Nanchuan from the Wushu set, you know, they'll look at it, they oh, really pretty. Now I'm depressed. I can't do that either. Right. <laughs> but we say, okay, <laughs> you know, let's, let's relax the body. Let's raise the arms. Let's drop the elbow, sink the breath. You know, these are things that people can achieve. And I think that also helps to lift the spirits and make you feel pretty good. I see. And you, you spoke in the beginning about the connection between physicality and yes. mental dimension. Yes, yes. So uh, how Tai Chi helps us physically? What sure. So, absolutely. So the, the, the benefits of Tai Chi are numerous. Um, the most obvious benefits of Tai Chi that you hear about are, um, people will talk about, it's good for balance, right? And it is. It's great for balance. Um, but this is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, you know, it improves circulation, right? Um, again, working, because I work a lot with seniors, um, I've seen how important these things that we very often take for granted are, right? So we say, oh, you know, circulation, yeah, of course, my blood, you know, my heart pumps it, it, it goes in my body, it's fine. But as we age, we start to experience age-related degeneration, right? It's a real thing where, you know, our body doesn't heal as quickly. You go to sleep without an injury, you wake up with a you know, pulled muscle in your back. That's age, right? And, and Tai Chi can combat, can combat the effects of age-related degeneration. And so when we're talking about what it does physically, another thing that's really useful, um, both for people who have had Parkinson's or people who have had stroke, or even just people as we age, our coordination starts to go. And um, Tai Chi, because we are, we're doing it slowly, and we're doing it without, we're trying to do it devoid of tension. We don't want to be muscularly tense. Yes, um, and so we're able to feel what's happening. And because we watch what's happening, we track, okay, if I bring my hands down, I see where it comes, I reference my body. Um, this tracking with your eyes 
helps your brain to make a connection between what your body is doing. And this improves our sense of proprioception, right? So yeah. proprioception, that idea of where our body is in space, right? And proprioception is something we take for granted until you go to catch a ball or you go to, you know, you go to pick up a, pick up a glass, do you pick it up or do you just knock it over? You know, these are things that are, have to do with proprioception. Um, you know, joint mobility, I think, is a really big issue. I think, I think so many people don't use their joints in the way they're designed, right? My, my hip is a ball in a socket. But if I want to take a turn down a hallway, I don't typically go, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go right way, right? <laughs> Most people take small corrective steps. They don't use the hip to turn out, right? So they're yeah. not using the ball to its potential. They use the ball more like it's an elbow. Oh, yes, you're right. right? And so I think um, improving the elasticity and the mobility of a joint is, has a great effect on our health and our ability to move without injury. Another thing in the United States that's really popular is, first of all, hip replacement, right? <laughs> but then the other thing is back injuries. There, it's a, it's a, you know, there's a billion dollar industry out there. There's a store called the Relax the Back Store. They sell chairs, right? <laughs> so, so um, you know, when we're, when we're talking about why do people get back injuries, one of the reasons is the stretch response, right? So that stretch response is, it's a positive thing. It keeps me, if I step off a, off a curb and I start to roll my ankle instead of breaking my ankle because there's no support, the brain gets sent the signal and it tells the muscles tighten up to make sure that that doesn't just flop over and break. So it's a good thing. But also, if you're not used to movement, and you go to turn to pick up a stapler off a desk and you turn a little bit wrong, your brain gets sent that same signal, hey, unfamiliar, sees everything up to, to make it strong. And what happens is it's very violent and the muscles can pull the vertebrae out of position and you end up with real injury. And very few exercises offer us an opportunity to turn the waist. Everyone thinks they turn the waist, right? You see the runner and they go, yeah, I'm turning my waist. I'm like, no, you're moving your arms. You know, turning the waist is, is the body moving without the, if I do this, this is the hips, right? But if I turn here, that's the torso. And when you get the body to move, you get that twisting of the lower lumbar area, the muscles get used to movement, then they're less prone to injury. They're more prone to relax through movement. They say, hey, this is, you know, your brain says, hey, this is normal. Don't freak out, right? <laughs> and so you're less likely to injure yourself. Um, and then lastly, because, you know, my, my parents are acupuncturists, I think, you know, there's this idea in, in Chinese medicine, in Western medicine, very often we're teaching, we're treating the symptom. You have a headache, take a pill, right? Um, in, in Chinese medicine, they try to treat the environment, the body, right? Because again, if you can get the body uh, in the condition that it's designed to, to function in, it functions much better, right? And so, to heal tai, the absolutely. And so, I think that Tai Chi really helps to um, to create that environment where the body's moving in a way that it's supposed to be moving. It becomes stronger from doing that, not muscularly necessarily stronger, but certainly more acclimated to movement. Um, it's the joints are more lubricated and mobile. Uh, the muscles release more easily. You gain a greater range of mobility. Um, I just, I, I, I think the, the, the benefits of doing this are incredible. So you mentioned the balance, the mobility, stability, circulation, so many benefits. Yes. So I feel like my last question will be all, almost obsolete. Is Tai Chi or Qigong a path to wellness? Can take us to find Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, 100% without any hesitation, I say absolutely it is. Um, you know, I have, you know, we, ha we haven't done even the Parkinson's study that we did. Um, it wasn't like a medical study where they're taking blood samples and they say, okay, you know, on a cellular level, you've changed this or that. And we don't make any of those types of claims. However, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence because I do this every day. I work with people all over the place. and 
I've been doing this now for, you know, like I say, it's a start, but for, for long enough to experience some of this. And so, you know, I give you an example. We have a gentleman in our Tai Chi program for Parkinson's who he had a hip replacement that went bad. And then he has Parkinson's and he's also quite old. And so when he first came to take the class, this was before COVID, um, we have a freight elevator in the building and we're on the second floor and I would go meet him at the back of the building and he would come with his walker and he would come into the, to the freight elevator. I'll take him upstairs, he'd do the class. Most of the class he would sit in a chair. So while my teacher, uh, you know, Grandmaster Calvin Chin would be teaching the rest of the class, I would be in the class with him, but I would face him at a chair, do everything, mirror image, and we would do all of the exercises in a chair. And over time, what happened is, um, one day he showed up without his walker, he showed up with a cane. And the next thing you know, he says, I don't need the, I'm not gonna call you to meet me in the back, I'm gonna come up the stairs in the front. I said, okay, let me watch it. And sure enough, up and down the stairs, no problem. And then, you know, he would do the class without the chair anymore. He would do 90% of the class without the chair. He might have the chair nearby, just in case, you know, he has a fatigue or his hips bothering him, you know. But um, this is actually not a rare situation. This is something that happens when we teach Tai Chi all the time. I, you know, we had a student who, she had a frozen shoulder. So she came, you know, she came to my Sibu and she said, you know, I wanna let you know, if I don't raise my hand up here, like I saw you do in class, it's because I can't move that shoulder. I was in a car accident, it's got pins in it, it doesn't move. He said, okay, no problem. You know, do whatever you can as best you can and that's it don't worry about the rest and so six months later we're doing the exercises and i ask him didn't she have a shoulder problem and he goes yeah well maybe it's the other side and then she does the other side and it's up here too and so after class he asked her like didn't you have a shoulder issue and she said oh yeah like even she wasn't thinking about it she wasn't aware of it the idea that you just move it to improve it over time it gets better you know so so I think there's, there's a lot of evidence to that effect. Um, you know, even myself, I, some years ago, I went to uh, my friend's wedding in India. And while I was there, I ended up having an, an impacted wisdom tooth that got very infected. And it turned into a kind of a scary situation. I came back to the United States and I was rushed to the hospital and I was in a coma for three days. And, you know, it really took me out. And um, by the way, I always take very good te care of the teeth now because never want that again. But, uh, but you know, what was interesting is, you know, I'm, I'm in the hospital. Um, I'm, you know, at night, I'm there in the, in the intensive care unit on my own. Um, as soon as I felt strong enough, I stood up, do a little bit of Qigong exercise, do some Tai Chi um, as best I can. You know, it wasn't my best Tai Chi at all, but I feel like it really helped kind of get the body to release, get the body back in that kind of natural state. Um, you know, so even for myself personally, outside of the fact that um, when I do Tai Chi, I feel good, right? So it's not, a, there's no scientific study attached to that, but it's just, it's, it's the truth of what I experience every day for myself is that when I do it, I feel good. If I don't do it, I notice a difference in how I feel that day. And you know, seeing you so happy, radiant, and always smiling, it's a guarantee that truly Tai Chi leads us to well-being. Uh, well. I, 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 I couldn't argue that, absolutely. I think it's 100% true. Thank you so yeah. much. And I would like to ask you at the end, Lucian, um, how many classes do you have per week? Where people they can find you? Sure, so um, we have, a, first of all, when COVID hit, we have a school in Newton, Massachusetts in the United States that um, we have an 8,000 square foot facility, which was uh, remodeled. We finished remodeling maybe six months before COVID hit. <laughs> and so we put in all new flooring and a new air conditioning system and new windows and you know uh, new mirrors and all kinds of stuff, really try to improve the space. And then of course COVID hit and everything is shut down, locked down. And so when that happened, we had to pivot um, directions. Now we had been doing online streaming uh, through Vimeo and our website for a few years before. So we had all this equipment and infrastructure, which was nice. Um, but we had to really shift because we said, okay, what are we gonna do? Like we have to, we have to offer something of value to people during this time, especially because 
they need it now more than ever. If you, you know, if they're not going to go out, if they stay locked up in their house, um, their health will deteriorate, their mental health, their physical health. Yeah. So, so this is one of the reasons that we started to really build the YouTube channel and the stuff on Facebook. And, and as of today, I think we have 830 subscribers um, on YouTube and we stream classes, which is Calvin Chen's Martial Arts Academy on YouTube. And, and we I'm stream, uh, you are, and we appreciate it very much. Thank and you. I, yeah, it's awesome. And, and, you know, we stream four days a week live. Um, one of the differences, uh, it's not like I set up a camera for myself. Um, we have multiple cameras that we use in the stream and I monitor the chat. So in the comments section, if someone asks a question during the class, we can have my CFO answer that question right away in real time. So it's, it's, we're trying to make an experience that's a little bit better than just watching a static video experience, something a little more interactive. Um, we also have a Patreon page if people go to either our YouTube channel or to our website at calvinchin.com. Um, they can see there uh, that we have a Patreon page which allows people to support what we're doing. And at the same time, we offer different tiers of benefits. One of those tiers has uh, Zoom classes, which are like this, a much more um, engaging and interactive experience. Um, having the teacher be able to see you obviously makes a big difference uh, because you can correct position and those types of things. Um, and explain things in a thorough way as well. So we have those kind of channels and those are our primary channels. If people are in our geographic area and they want to come try a class, they're always welcome to do so. They can try a class for free and if they like it, hopefully sign up. All of our classes right now are socially distanced. So in our 8,000 square feet, we don't have any more than 25 students at one time. We have markers on the floor to keep people oh, safe. Very safe. Masks you know, hand sanitizer, cleaning. We use a contactless temperature gauge uh, for everyone when they come through the door. Um, so, you know, we try to, because the safety of our students is also very important to us. But in the meantime, one of the interesting thing that's happened with all of this is that a year ago, if you, if I told you, you know, we can, we can learn Tai Chi through Zoom, you would say, ha, okay. But, <laughs> but, you know, now everyone's so used to using Zoom as a platform that people are more open to learning online and realize that they can and that it offers some benefits because they can take care of their physical safety as well during this pandemic. Um, I think that the streaming is something that will continue actually for many years, even after COVID has hopefully passed. Um, so, you know, we've really pushed hard to build that segment of things. So you kind of, now the technology in your- Yes, in your yeah. Well, you know, one of, one of my teacher Calvin's, uh, he has like a slogan. He says, uh, the Tai Chi paradigm, a modern approach to an antiquated way, right? So, so Tai Chi is an ancient art, but we have to think about the times we live in, what tools can we use to help uh, spread that art form? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. This is a, uh, a wonderful phrase to, to yes, end yeah. this uh, podcast. I would like to thank you so much, Lucien, for your time and for these wonderful words. Sebastian, thank you so much. It's a it's a truly an honor and a pleasure to to uh, you know to honor to, and to, pleasure. It's all mine, Lucien. Wonderful. Well, let's uh, let's stay in touch, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the YouTube channel and elsewhere. And and you know, don't be a stranger. Oh, not at all. We keep in okay. touch. Thank you wonderful. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, Sebastian. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.